With the Bitcoin bull market just getting started, crypto scams are coming out of the woodwork. Today, we take a trip down memory lane and revisit the Doquan and Terra Luna saga, a $40 billion crypto Ponzi scheme that was twice as big as Bernie Madoff's. What can we learn from this epic collapse? And how can we teach new Bitcoiners the ways to identify these scams that will inevitably come up during the next bull market? Hey everyone, and welcome to the Bitcoin Daily Show. I'm Dante Cook, head of Swan Business. Typically, we're covering all of the news in the Bitcoin markets and how it relates to the macroeconomic environment, a new monetary technology, and most importantly, your path to freedom. But today we're taking a little detour. As I've read hundreds of emails over the past few weeks at our daily at swanbitcoin.com email address, I've had some growing concerns. As Bitcoin has experienced 40, 50, 60% price gains over the last 45 to 60 days, I've seen a shift in the questions that people are asking. How can I borrow against my Bitcoin? Should I lend my Bitcoin? Should I trade my Bitcoin for other crypto tokens? Should I diversify my Bitcoin portfolio? Should I leave it on Coinbase? I get rewards if I leave it on these platforms. These are the sorts of questions that you hear every time that there's a bull run in the crypto market. And I want to help you avoid the mistakes that millions of people have made and lost all of their wealth and life savings from. Before we dive into the Doquan and Terra Luna saga, I want to start with a base foundation of advice from fellow swan Neil Jacobs. Don't leave your Bitcoin on an exchange. Don't lend your Bitcoin. Don't borrow against your Bitcoin. Don't trade Bitcoin and don't diversify your Bitcoin for other crypto. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing deep dives into the people, platforms, and products that have collectively lost billions of dollars from millions of people around the globe. Everyday working people like you and me. First up in our series is Doquan and the Terra Luna Ponzi scheme. Just under two years ago, in May of 2022, the Terra Luna token crashed from over $80 a coin to just under a dollar. Trust began to fail in this algorithmic stable coin that wasn't so stable. Luna was founded by Doquan, a South Korean computer science graduate from Stanford University, who wrote a white paper in 2016 with a dream of creating a decentralized payment system backed by a stable coin or a token that would enable global commerce for everyone around the world. Bitcoin, anyone? And just so you know, his dream of creating an uncollateralized stable coin wasn't the first of its kind. Terra USD followed a long line of other attempts. Ample Forth, Empty Set Dollar, the DeFi Dollar, the Neutrino Dollar, BitUSD, New Bits, Iron Titan, Safecoin, Digital Dollar, and Basis Cash. This wasn't a new thing. The entire underpinning of the system was this algorithmic stablecoin, UST, which promised that people could exchange one UST for $1 worth of Luna, their secondary token. So on top, you have UST. Underneath, you have the Luna token. And underneath of that, you have the Anchor Protocol, which was a way for people to store real value and real money in the form of UST tokens and get rewards so their early founders and investors could take money from this scheme and make more money with your hard-earned money out the back door. A classic Ponzi scheme. The Anchor Protocol promised users rewards, 18 to 20% yield on the UST that they submitted into the protocol. And with that, the founders and early investors took that money and ran, or they tried to make more money than they were lending out in rewards. Again, a classic Ponzi scheme. Doquan made false promises about this algorithmic stablecoin from the very beginning, saying that if the value of UST ever went above Luna, you could just trade $1 of Luna for one UST and make a profit. Vice versa, if the peg were ever to break to the downside, meaning UST were to trade less than Luna, you could then trade $1 worth of UST for Luna. Again, making a profit. His pitch was, you can profit no matter what. Does anybody see any inherent flaws in this logic? So to recap, as the market cap of UST would grow, people would equate that with value of the underlying token Luna, and the price of Luna would skyrocket, giving the founders and early investors profit from this made-up token. But the issue was, at its height, Terra Luna had a market cap of $40 billion and UST had a market cap of $18 billion. But the problem was this, they never had the collateral behind the pegs that they claim to have. By comparison, Bernie Madoff's decades-long Ponzi scheme only cost investors between 12 and 20 billion overall. This is 
three times as much as that. And Bernie was sentenced to 150 years in prison for all of the damage that he did. But the difference between Doquan and Bernie is that Doquan impacted so many more retail investors. The damage spread much further and much wider. Like all Ponzi schemes, they're eventually found out. A lot of people in the Bitcoin community knew that the gig was up when Luna Foundation started to purchase Bitcoin in order to back its peg. And they weren't just buying a little bit of Bitcoin. They bought billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. And so how did they pay for all of this Bitcoin? Well, they just converted their made up Luna tokens for UST and bought Bitcoin that way through other phony crypto exchanges, which we'll get into later. A number of investors started to lose confidence in Doquan around April of 2022, dumping their early gifted or proof of stake shares in the project. This caused major dips in the prices and caused major discrepancies between the peg of UST and then the Luna token. The Ponzi scheme was collapsing from the inside out. Doquan became very frantic, posting on Twitter super frequently and calling people who didn't like the project poor or stupid. And in order to save confidence in his project, he created Terra 2.0 in order to reinvigorate investor confidence in the project itself. On May 7th, the UST token fell from its dollar peg to 35 cents by May 9th. And the $80 Luna token fell from over $80 a coin to less than a dollar by May 12th. Just a few weeks later in that month, the token was completely delisted from almost all major trading and crypto exchanges. From there, the co-founder Doquan went into hiding and in March of 2023 was arrested in Montenegro in an airport with three fraudulent passports, claiming not guilty to the fraudulent schemes in the $40 billion Ponzi that he committed. Doquan is currently being sought by the US and South Korea for his crimes. So what does this mean for you as a new Bitcoiner on your journey? The simple way to spot a Ponzi scheme can be summed up in one simple rule. If you don't know where the yield is coming from, you are the yield. Nothing comes ex nihilo, or something can't come from nothing. And that's why Bitcoin uses the proof of work protocol. There's costly energy needed to mint and produce another block. Not proof of stake, which creates tokens out of thin air, distributes them to early friends and investors, and then monetizes off of your back and your hard-earned money. Know the difference between the two types of protocols. Bitcoin doesn't need Stanford whiz kids or computer nerds in order to sustain it. I mean, just look at yesterday. GBTC had $643 million worth of outflows, the single biggest day for an ETF in the last 15 years. And you know what was the second highest? GBTC. And you know what? Bitcoin doesn't care. And on the other side, you have MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor purchasing over 9000 or $623 million worth of Bitcoin permissionlessly. And again, Bitcoin doesn't care, which is also why Japan's state pension fund with $1.4 trillion in assets under management is looking for more information about Bitcoin as a diversification tool. This news comes directly after the Bank of Japan announcing that they're ending negative interest rates while dealing with a stagnant economy and sticky inflation. Japan needs an asset that will allow them to outpace the slow growth in their economy without lowering interest rates. And they think that tool might be Bitcoin. I'll leave you with a couple final thoughts. Don't borrow against your Bitcoin. Don't fall for some Thor chain, God of War, shape-shifting swap out of a Marvel movie. You know that nothing will stop me on here as it returns to my hand. Not even your face. You go quite mad. You, you'll be executed for this. And I'll see you on the other side, brother. All right, I yield. If you hear yield from a crypto bro, run just like he did so that you can avoid getting wrecked worse than Thor's hammer hitting your face. I'm telling you this to protect you. I've seen too many people lose their life savings and their worth chasing these crypto scams and schemes offering yield. I want to help you to reach the freedom goals that you desire. So in love, like Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction, say crypto one more time. Don't lend out your Bitcoin. Don't put your Bitcoin in a trustless swap. Don't borrow against your Bitcoin. Don't sell your Bitcoin for another kind of coin. Just stay humble and stack sats and enjoy the journey along the way.
And with that, we're signing off. I'm Dante Cook at swan.com. Happy stacking.